You asked, and I'm delivering. Here are 10 more tech frustrations that make your life miserable. Part 2. Have you ever typed out a message only to have your smartphone insist it knows better? Predictive text is supposed to save time, but more often than not, it feels like your phone is gaslighting you. You type a word, it changes it, you correct it, and then it changes it back, like a stubborn know-it-all that just won't quit. It's as if your phone has decided that it's the final authority on what you meant to say. This can lead to some truly baffling and embarrassing autocorrect fails. Even worse, it doesn't seem to learn from your corrections. You'd think after the tenth time of rejecting ducking, it would get the hint. But no, here we are, battling our devices to say what we actually mean. Predictive text? More like predictably frustrating. Next up, let's talk about those default email signatures. Like, sent from my iPhone. They were tacky back in 2008. And guess what? They're still tacky in 2024. It's like the digital equivalent of a kick me sign you forgot was stuck to your back. Sure, it's meant to be helpful, letting people know you're replying on the go. But in reality, it just screams, I didn't bother to personalize this. And don't even get me started on the folks who leave them in business emails. Nothing says professionalism like an auto-generated line telling everyone you're typing from your phone. But hey, at least it's not as bad as those lengthy disclaimers some companies add, right? What's worse is that some people don't even realize it's there, like a digital ghost haunting every email they send. So you're scrolling through Netflix trying to decide what to watch. You stop on a title to read the description, and BAM! The movie or show starts playing before you even finish the first sentence. It's like Netflix has no chill, thinking, Oh, you're curious? Here, let's just start it for you. Except, you're not ready. Maybe you're trying to gauge if it's worth your time or checking if it's something you can watch with the kids. But Netflix doesn't care. It's got an itchy trigger finger. This autoplay feature turns what should be a relaxing selection process into a race against time. And the worst part? There's no pause to collect your thoughts just full speed ahead, like it's trying to trap you in a commitment you're not ready for. Let's talk security, specifically Face ID and other biometric features. When they work, they're like magic, unlocking your device with a glance or a touch. But when they don't, it's a whole different story. Imagine this, you've just woken up, bleary-eyed and not at your best, and your phone decides it doesn't recognize you. Suddenly, you're not just dealing with morning grogginess, but also a device that's refusing to acknowledge your existence. It's like being locked out of your own life. And, sure, there's always the backup passcode, but let's be real, that's a step backward in convenience. Or, how about when you're outside, sunglasses on, and Face ID just flat out refuses to cooperate? Now you're stuck taking off your glasses or resorting to good old-fashioned typing. If there's one tech accessory that has caused more headaches than anything else, it's the humble USB cable. You'd think something as ubiquitous as a charging cable would be standardized by now, but no, welcome to the wild west of USB. Some cables charge at lightning speed, others at a snail's pace, and the only way to know is to decipher the microscopic print on the side, if it's even there. Then there's the whole USB Type A, USB Type B, USB Type C mess. USB Type C was supposed to solve everything, but of course, not all cables are created equal. Some are just for charging, others for data transfer, and God forbid you mix them up and wonder why your device is charging slower than molasses. It's like trying to use a one-size-fits-all key for a dozen different locks. Sometimes it works, and other times, you're left jiggling it in frustration. Remember when every phone had a headphone jack and life was simple? You'd just plug in your earbuds and go. No fuss, no hassle. But now, it seems like every new phone is ditching this tiny but crucial port, forcing us all into the world of wireless audio. Companies claim it's all about making devices slimmer and more advanced. But let's be honest, it's about selling us expensive wireless earbuds and annoying dongles. And let's not even start on how easy it is to lose those dongles, or have your Bluetooth earbuds die right when you need them most. It's a change no one asked for, and yet here we are, longing for the good old days of simple wired connections. Speaking of interruptions, let's talk about those app rating pop-ups. You know the ones. They appear just as you're getting the hang of a new app. You've barely used it, and suddenly, it wants to know, Do you love us? Rate us? Love you? I don't even know you yet. It's like someone asking you to review a movie after watching just the trailer. It's way too soon to tell. And the worst part? If you don't give them a rating, they just keep popping up. 
like an overeager waiter who won't stop asking if everything's alright. You end up hitting remind me later, but later comes sooner than you think. And if you give a low rating, they often ask why, putting you on the spot like you're breaking up with them. It's exhausting. There's nothing quite like the frustration of your device overheating right when you need it most. You're in the middle of an intense gaming session, editing a video, or even just navigating through multiple apps, and suddenly, your phone or laptop feels like it's about to fry an egg. The screen dims, performance slows down, and in some cases, it might even shut off completely. It's like your device is throwing in the towel, unable to handle the pressure, just when you need it to keep up the most. What's even more frustrating is that these are top-of-the-line devices, advertised for their power and efficiency. Yet, push them a little too hard, and they start to sweat. Literally. The promise of portable, high-performance computing falls apart when you're forced to stop what you're doing to let your device cool down. And don't even think about using it while it's charging. That's like asking for a mini meltdown. Let's switch gears and talk about Wi-Fi speeds. You've got a high-speed internet plan, your router's top of the line, but the connection? It's like rolling the dice. One minute you're streaming in 4K, the next you're stuck buffering a cat video. It's maddening. And don't even think about walking to the other side of the house. You'll be lucky if you can load a web page. It's like your Wi-Fi signal has a mind of its own, deciding when and where it wants to work. You'd think, with all the advancements in technology, we'd have consistent, reliable internet by now. But nope. Instead, we're left rebooting routers, moving closer to the signal, or worse, calling customer service, who'll just tell you to do what you've already done. It's a constant battle between you and your connection. And let's be honest, the Wi-Fi wins most of the time. It's like living with a moody roommate who controls the internet and decides when you can use it. And finally, let's talk about wireless charging. Or should I say, wireless charging that only works if you place your phone in the exact perfect spot. You carefully set your phone down, expecting it to start charging, only to check back later and find out nothing happened. It's like your phone decided to take a nap instead. You adjust it slightly, waiting for that satisfying buzz or light, but no dice. Now, you're in a full-on precision operation, nudging it millimeter by millimeter, hoping to hit the sweet spot. And even when you do get it charging, one accidental bump and it's game over. It's supposed to be convenient, but it feels more like a challenge, as if the charger is taunting you. Can you find the magic spot? You'd think by now we'd have reliable wireless charging, but instead, it's like balancing a phone on a needle. And that's all. 10 more tech headaches that make us consider chucking our gadgets into the nearest lake. But let's face it, we'd just end up swimming after them. Until next time, this is John from Brief Biology, reminding you to keep calm, carry on, and maybe keep a spare charging cable handy.